When Dr. Nizar Ibrahim and his colleagues released their description of a new specimen of Spinosaurus in the journal Science in 2014, they claimed it would transform what is known about this mysterious theropod. The authors claimed that by combining the newly discovered Moroccan specimen of Spinosaurus, which they referred to as FSACKK11888, with previously known Spinosaurus material, such as the demolished Stromer material, as well as referred isolated bones found across northern Africa, a truly astonishing new portrait of the species would emerge. The authors said that this was accomplished by integrating their newly found specimen of Spinosaurus with previously known material. The redesigned Spinosaurus was shown as a knuckle-walking quadrupedal theropod that had a pelvis and hind legs that were remarkably smaller than expected. It was thought that these were adaptations for the specialized aquatic pursuit predator function that the authors argued for Spinosaurus. Within this framework, they considered Spinosaurus as a dinosaurian parallel to early whales. The reconstructed Spinosaurus has caused quite a bit of controversy, as the vast majority of you are likely well aware. Please, for the love of the gods, come up with new memes and jokes. I have probably read the same Spino in 2023 XYZ joke in the comments thousands of times by this point. I mean, literally thousands. While most paleontologists had previously accepted that Spinosaurus ate fish and lived in and around water, the rest of the claims had been questioned repeatedly. Paleontologists doctors Donald Henderson, Dave Hone, Thomas Holtz, and others questioned the swimming ability and adaptations for aquatic pursuit predation in their published works. In 2015, the work of Sir Joshua Evers and friends questioned whether the Moroccan FSAC specimen was really a single individual and whether there was more than a single species of Spinosaur in northern Africa at the time. Dr. Mark Witten, Jamie Hayden, and Scott Hartman each presented their own skeptical viewpoints and explored them at length. Others were more encouraging in their comments. On his outstanding Theropoda blog, Andrea Cow defended the dimensions and single individual status of the FSAC specimen on several occasions. Dwayne Nash, hello Dwayne if you happen to be viewing this, created a series of articles comparing Spinosaurs to aquatic hippos. The authors of the research published in 2014 reached out to Mark Witten and Scott Hartman in an exceptional demonstration of constructive communication in order to explain their respective points of view. Since then, a sufficient number of articles and fresh material discovered at the dig site in 2014 have been discovered, establishing beyond a reasonable doubt that the specimen found in Morocco belongs to a single individual and is not a chimera composed of parts of many critters. Let's take a look at one feature of this specimen's unique anatomy that is often brought up in conversation. Those legs. We can speak about every single strange aspect of this specimen and this animal, and I will at some point, but for now, let's focus on those legs. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why the traditional interpretation of Spinosaurus as a bipedal fisher might not hold up to the evidence. The model of Spinosaurus that is now being utilized for ecological niche assessment is a chimera made up of individuals that don't belong in the same species together at all. In a later video, I will go into further detail about this topic, but to summarize, it is possible that not all specimens of Spinosaurus aegypticus belong to the same species or genus. The pre-tail and tail fossils were discovered at the same dig site in Morocco, and they did indeed come from the same animal. However, it is unclear whether or not these fossils represent a Spinosaurus aegypticus a new species of Spinosaurus, or a new genus that is very closely related to Spinosaurus. However, it is quite possible that it is not the same species. Because of this, any study that operates under the assumption that all Spinosaurus material belongs to the same species or genus of animal is operating from an incorrect starting point in their investigation. This may not be a big problem for whatever it is that the hypothetical team is testing for, but in the vast majority of cases, this is really a rather significant issue. 
If the smaller Moroccan specimen is younger than all the other known Spinosaurus material, and if it may or may not be its own entity, then how can those tiny-ass grippers be explained? The femurs, which come from a known smaller species, are scaled to match a 14-meter Spinosaurus in numerous recent articles. This raises a number of questions about the accuracy of these measurements. During walking or running, a single femur in a bipedal animal must be able to support the full body weight of the animal. Because of this, the breadth of the animal's femur may be used to estimate its body mass. Back in 2014, Nicholas Campione and his colleagues expanded this biomechanical problem to include bipedal dinosaurs. According to the findings presented in this research, a robust connection exists between an organism's body mass and both its physiological and ecological characteristics. As a consequence of this, the development of reliable, widely applicable methods for estimating body mass in the fossil record paves the way for the possibility of reconstructing paleobiology and investigating evolutionary ecology on a vast scale over long periods of time. The team found that body mass estimates for a sample of bipedal dinosaurs are consistent with recent estimates based on volumetric life reconstructions. In contrast, this equation is simpler to use, with the concomitant potential to provide a wider set of body mass estimates for extinct bipeds. The new model was made from an equation that was originally used to estimate the body mass of quadrupeds. The use of the corrected quadrupedal estimations in conjunction with the previously published quadrupedal equation provides a method that can be used to estimate the body masses of both quadrupeds and bipeds in a consistent manner. This is despite the fact that it is obvious that no single estimation model is error-free. These models have implications for conducting large-scale macroevolutionary analyses of body size throughout the entire evolutionary history of terrestrial vertebrates, and in particular, across major changes in body plan such as the evolution of bipedality in archosaurs and quadrupedality in dinosaurs. These changes occurred in body plan as a direct result of the selection pressures exerted by the environment. In a nutshell, the femur of a huge animal cannot hold all of its weight if it is too thin. It would simply splinter into pieces. Easy peasy. However, a little animal cannot afford to throw away resources by making its femurs any thicker than they need to be in order to function properly. The end result was the discovery of a very strong correlation between the probable body mass of dinosaurs and the diameter or heftiness of their femurs. This correlation offers excellent predictive value for dinosaurs. So let's apply this to Spinosaurus. If the femoral equation yields a similar body mass to volumetric methods used for the current 2022 Spinosaurus model, then that's a nice bit of support for that model. Unfortunately, no dice. In their paper describing the remains of Scotty the Tyrannosaurus, doctors W. Scott Persons, Phil Curry, and Gregory Erickson also estimated the body mass of Spinosaurus in order to compare the largest known theropod dinosaurs with the remains of Scotty. This team used the femur method and got a result of about 1,600 kilograms or 1.76 tons. Hank Sharp, paleoartist and the progenitor for the idea of this video, did the same thing to double check. He got about 1300 kilograms or 1.43 tons. Both of these results are far lower than what Paul Sereno and team got in their 2022 paper, which was a whole 7400 kilograms or 8.15 tons. Basically, Spinosaurus as currently modeled could not stand on its own two legs. It was literally too big to walk. This does not assume that dinosaurs followed the same femur to mass relationship as in modern birds, which has been supported by other volumetric estimates. So what does this mean? It could mean that Spinosaurus was simply not bipedal. Spinosaurus' legs didn't support its weight, that the current model of Spinosaurus is incorrect and chimeric, that Sereno and others calculated mass wrong, or that this method simply just doesn't work, which is always a possibility in just about anything. And before it's said, yes, Spinosaurus had pachyostotic femurs. That means the insides of their femurs were thickened. 
they were not as hollow as other dinosaurs, both in general and other dinosaurs of the same size. Hank Sharp suspects it may not matter here. Nicholas Campione and colleagues' 2014 study used volant, terrestrial, and aquatic birds, including penguins. There is a massive range in cortical bone thickness here, and yet… Anywho, this is one of many takes on Spinosaurus derived from the writing of Hank Sharp. He has made some particularly interesting points that I agree with. I especially want to point to the jumbled mess of Spinosaurus and Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. I will delve further into this mess in the future. Summed up, this model doesn't work anatomically. Its femur is built to support an animal six tons lighter than how everyone working off this chimera have modeled it. Also, this isn't solved by the femur getting a bit more robust in larger spinosaurs. To support a 7.4 ton animal, the femur would have had to have been four times larger in cross-sectional area. The easiest explanation is that these studies have reconstructed spinosaurus simply incorrectly. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial as well as my top as tier Tyrannosaurus patrons, Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.